Hi everyone, Frank Kim here, and today I'm going to be showing you the element sodium. Now when you think of sodium, you normally think of table salt, right? That's sodium bound with chlorine. You never actually find sodium alone in nature because it is super, super reactive. Sodium is not going to last very long if you leave it outside with nothing to protect it. It'll react with the surrounding carbon dioxide, with oxygen, with whatever else might be around. So this is pure metallic sodium. Yes, sodium's actually a metal all by itself when, it, when it's bound with nothing else. So it's a very soft reactive metal. Uh, let me show you where it is on the periodic table. So sodium is, it's right here. Right here with the alkali metals. The alkali metals all have one valence electron in their outermost shells. And they consider that electron to be an excess electron. They want to get rid of it. And the elements on this side of the periodic table, like oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, sulfur, they, they all, they're all a few electrons short of a full outer shell. So they're very glad to exchange electrons with sodium or other alkali metals and react to chemically bond. Now, due to sodium's extremely reactive nature, it reacts very violently with, with pretty much any nonmetal. So before I start reacting, I'm going to show you a few of the a few of the physical properties of sodium. Now, before I actually open this, you have to wear gloves while you're hand handling so pure sodium. Sodium will react with any water on your hands to form sodium hydroxide, also known as lye, which is a strong corrosive base. All right, so here we have a nice big chunk of sodium right here. As you can see, the surface is a bit discolored. It's got, it's got a coating of sodium oxides, hydroxides, and carbonates because even in the jar of protective mineral oil right there, which it will not react with, some oxygen, some CO2, and some water is going to diffuse through and react with it to form a coating here. Now, this, this is actually a very, very soft metal. You can easily... You can easily bend it and cut it with a knife. So let me cut it. Now if you cut it, it reveals the surface of pure unoxidized sodium. It's a remarkably shiny metal. Though with a, within a few seconds it will again coat itself in white sodium hydroxide, oxide, and carbonate. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to react a very small amount of it with water. Alright, so just about everyone's favorite sodium reaction is sodium's reaction with water. Sodium, re sodium reacts very violently with water to make sodium hydroxide. Let me show you the reaction. So it's... Get into the camera here. Here it is right here. So, solid sodium reacts with liquid water to make sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. And due to the heat of the reaction, as soon as the hydrogen is exposed to the surrounding oxygen, as soon as it heats up enough, it will combust. And the color at which it burns is going to be determined by the metal you're using. For example, it will burn a lilac purple if you're reacting potassium with water. This hydrogen will burn yellow since we're using sodium. Now before I start the reaction, I'm going to add a pH indicator to this water right here. I'm going to add a pH indicator called phenolphthalene. Upon contact with a base, it forms a purple compound, which that will tell you when your solution has become basic.
Alright, now, it's very, very unlikely to, to explode since I'm only using about 0.2 grams of sodium, but just in case it does, I'm going to put this face shield on. So as you can see, the solution quickly turns purple due to the sodium hydroxide being formed. Now please do not react sodium with, with water in a lake or, or a river or a bay or any other important ecosystem because this sodium hydroxide, as you can see, dramatically raises the pH, which is very, very harmful to surrounding organisms. So if you'd like to see the re so if you'd like to try this yourself, then please only react sodium with an isolated system of water, like this one right here. So you may be wondering, if sodium is so reactive, how do we ever separate it and get that metal in the first place? So I know three different ways to separate sodium from whatever it's bound with. Um, one is to mix a sodium salt with magnesium powder and ignite it, which produces a bit of a messy slag that's very hard to remove the sodium from, but it's there, and you can tell if you pour water on it because it will ignite. Um, another also involves magnesium. Um, you basically put it in solution at a catalyst. It's a bit of a complex process. Um, and I wanted to keep my video pretty short, so I'll, I'll explain how to make sodium in a separate video. So the third and final method is the one I use most often at home to make small amounts of sodium. So, so what I'm doing here is I'm basically melting sodium hydroxide and applying an electrical current to separate it into sodium, water vapor, and oxygen. So electricity is simply the flow of electrons. So the negative electrode here is where the electrons are entering the molten salt and the positive electrode is where they are leaving. <clears throat> so since we know that sodium's got an extra electron that it doesn't really want and that it gives up when it bonds to other elements, um, it basically accepts an electron for the negative side and separates as a droplet of liquid metal. Sodium has a very low melting point of roughly, uh, roughly 200 degrees Fahrenheit, so it has a much lower melting point than the salt itself. And at the positive electrode here, um, oxygen has given up, um, has taken electrons from sodium. So it's going to lose those electrons again and reorganize itself into water vapor and oxygen since hydroxide, hydroxide can't exist alone outside of a solution. So I'll, so I'll film this process and explain it a bit better later on. Next, I'm going to show you sodium's reaction with oxygen. Yeah, as you can see, it it uh, quickly melts. It has a very, very low melting point for a metal. Let me see if I can get it to ignite. There we go. So sodium is simply combining with oxygen to make sodium oxide. Now I've sped up the reaction quite a bit by heating up the sodium, but if I were to leave the sample out for several hours, all of it will likely convert to sodium oxide. The smoke you see is just a suspension in the air of tiny, tiny sodium oxide particles. So anyways, I'm going to move on to sodium's reaction with sulfur next. Alright, so next I'm going to react some sodium with sulfur. So here's a bit of sulfur powder right here. 
You can easily buy it at a farm supply store. It's used to uh, lower the pH of soil. And here's a few small pieces of sodium. Now, let's get the reaction started. As you can see, the reaction is pretty violent and spectacular. So the, uh, the dark red liquid you see is just liquid sulfur uh, melted by the heat of the reaction. And the white substance you see is sodium sulfide. And that's going to smell like rotten eggs. It's going to smell horrible. Um, sulfur compounds generally, they, they smell bad. There's no other way to put it. They stink. And also, stay away from the fumes of the reaction because sulfur dioxide will also form when the sulfur is reacting with the surrounding oxygen and that gas is quite toxic and smelly and hard to get out of your clothes. Alright, so next I'm going to see if I can get sodium to react with sand. Sand is silicon oxide and Silicon is far less reactive than sodium is, so let me see if I can get the sodium to take the oxygen from silicon. So again, here's a few chunks of sodium. All right, let's see if we can get this started. It does appear to be reacting just a bit, but it's very, very hard to separate silicon from oxygen. Yeah, it does indeed react with sand. It does get sand to burn, but it's very, very hard to get it started, and it burns rather slowly. So the last piece of sodium just ignited. And this one, this one's completely covered by the sand, so... It, can't, it couldn't have been exposed to any oxygen, so this proves that there's definitely a reaction going on here. Okay, so last but certainly not least, I'm going to drop larger amounts of sodium into water. So here's roughly a 6.8 pe gram piece of sodium. Now I must warn you, this reaction is explosive. It's very, very hard to predict what, when it's actually going to go off, so... This is a very, very dangerous reaction. You're going to want to wear a face shield. You're going to want to wear um, a lab coat. You're going to want to wear gloves. 
and I'm just going to toss the sodium in and run for my life. I told you this reaction was explosive. Past a certain tipping point, sodium essentially gets a negative surface tension and expands throughout that whole um, solution of water. And then it very, very rapidly produces hydrogen, and the pressure created by the hydrogen causes the whole thing to blow. And of course, that throws molten bits of burning sodium around, which is why this reaction is so dangerous. And it produces um, corrosive sodium hydroxide, so please only do this in an isolated system of water like the one right here, and make sure you're prepared. So, here's roughly 8 grams of sodium. Again, you're going to need a face shield, you're going to need gloves, and you're going to need a lab coat. You're going to need to be prepared for this reaction. This reaction is, is very dangerous. So again, I'm going to repeat my... Uh, Highly scientific procedure of dropping the sodium in and running for my life. So as you can see, lots of molten bits of sodium were thrown out again and ignited upon contact with the water on the ground right here. Alright, so before I end this video, I've decided to film one more sodium and water reaction um, at night because I thought it looked cool and you'd be able to see the burning bits of sodium thrown around by the reaction a lot better. Make sure the zoom is right. Okay, again, face shield, lab coat, gloves. This reaction is pretty dangerous, so you're going to need to be prepared for it, as I said earlier. And I'm going to repeat my highly scientific process once again of throwing the sodium in water and running for my life. There, it's a lot easier to see at night. It looks so cool, doesn't it? So this is, a, this is a really fun reaction, just as I've said many times before, you're going to have to be prepared and you're going to have to take necessary safety precautions. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.